Traveling this bending road is always an adventure, and I'm glad we can do it together. It's easier together because no matter where we go in life, two things are for certain. One, you will eventually come to a bend in your road, and two, God will always see you through. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and click the subscribe button so that you know when I upload my next video. In this way, we travel together and we encourage each other along the way. Hey, welcome to the Bending Road. Glad you're here this week. It's a, I don't know where you are at this point, but it is a beautiful sunny day. It's not too warm. The sun is bright. It's just, it's just absolutely gorgeous. And I just feel like, um, you know, like God is just smiling today. Um, you know, I, I know that sounds silly. I think God is smiling many days. I think there are days where God is shaking his head going, mm, I don't know about these people. Um, and I think there are probably days where God is crying, but God knows the bigger picture. And um, I think sometimes that sun just shines on us to remind us um, about the goodness of God. That isn't what I was going to talk about today, but um, as I as I glance out my, my office window just now, I just realized how bright and beautiful the sun is and the the trees are are dancing in the in the light and ah, just beautiful beautiful anyway anyway no I actually I've been thinking about um actually Jonah this week um Jonah Jonah is an interesting story of course God called Jonah to do something that Jonah didn't want to do and uh so Jonah tried to run away well, it didn't work out real well, we know. And um, but what what always strikes me about Jonah, I think I think just a major part of this story is the prayer that Jonah prays when Jonah is at his absolute lowest. He's in the belly of the fish, and and he just he knows what he's done. He's gone the wrong way, and and he knows God is unhappy with him, and. God has him right where he wants him. God has him in this place where there is no escape. He has to face himself. He has to face his actions. And he has to face God. So Jonah prays. And I want to read this prayer to you. This is found in Jonah 2. And it says, From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. And he said, In my distress... I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas, and the currents swirled around me, and all your waves and breakers swept over me. And I said, I have been banished from your sight. Yet I will look again toward the holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me and surrounded me, and the seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you, Lord, my God, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will make good. I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. And verse 10, I just love this. It says, and the Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. I think this is a powerful prayer because because. Jonah, again, is, is in this place where he can't do anything. He can't go anywhere. He can't make any more decisions for himself. He can't, um, he doesn't, he, he can't do anything. He's not going to be able to fix this on his own. He has no choice but to turn to God. And, and he realizes that in this deep distress, God hears his prayer. He recognizes that, that God put him in this place. 
He says, I, I did this horrible thing, and Lord, and you put me in this place. He's given all the credit to God. And sometimes we say, oh, no, God would never do anything like that. But but the reality is, is God can. And sometimes God puts us in a very difficult spot to get our attention, to get us to turn to him. God will go to desperate measures to get our attention. So Jonah recognizes this and he says, I'm in a horrible place and I've been banished. I've been banished. But you, Lord, have brought me up from the pit. So not only did does he recognize that God put him here, he also recognizes that God is the one who will bring him out. That God is his only hope. And that's where God wants us to be is knowing that he is our only hope. He is our way of salvation. There is nothing we can do to fix this on our own. So he says, when my life was ebbing away, when I was at my end, when, when there was no more hope for me, I remembered you, Lord. And my prayer rose to your holy temple. God can hear us from anywhere. We are never too low. We're never too out of reach. You know, the, 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 what can separate me from God? Can nakedness or famine or war or any death? No, not, nothing can separate me from God. And that's the reality that Jonah was, was having in this time. Then he says something to me is just really amazing in verse 8. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. And that almost sounds like disjointed from this prayer, but, but it's not. Those worthless idols, those things that we cling to. You know, Jonah was clinging to his hatred for the Ninevites. He was not going to go and preach this message to them. That was his worthless idol, his pride. His arrogance that he knew better than God or that he knew exactly what God was going to do in this case or he knew exactly who these people were. That was his worthless idol. And he had to let go of that because those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. Other translations say things like forfeit the grace that would be theirs. We forfeit grace. God's gift of love, when we hang on to anger and bitterness and, and arrogance, pride, self-control, self-importance, this is the way I've always been. This is who I am. When we declare our own um, identity and our own worth, we declare that and say, this is, this is who I am. I'm worth more than that. I'm not going to do that. I'm better than that. When we do that, we're clinging to worthless idols. Even possessions. When we say, no, I'm never giving this up or that up, or I'm not going to take that lower paying job, or I'm not going to give up my retirement plan, or I'm not going to give up my house. I'm never going to give up those things. Those folks, those are worthless idols. Those are worthless idols. To say I'm not giving up my dreams of this great job or this great retirement or this great salary or this benefits package. Those are worthless idols. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you hear that. That's important. I will, sh with shouts of grateful praise, sacrifice to you. A sacrifice is something we give up. A sacrifice is something that, that we maybe can't afford. It, it's what we can't afford. If I can afford $20 to a homeless person, if that's no skin off my teeth, if I have, you know, three twenties in my wallet, four twenties in my wallet and a bunch of money in the bank account, that's not a sacrifice. It's not a sacrifice, but giving up those, those idols, again, the retirement, the home, the, the big dreams, the big salary package, the, those are sacrifices because when we give them up, 
we don't have any of that left. When I sacrifice to you, I will do it with shouts of grateful praise. I won't do it begrudgingly. I won't do it with anger. I won't do it with resentment. I won't do it with tears and weeping and crying and hanging on for dear life. No, I will do it with grateful praise. Because, why? Because salvation comes from the Lord. I will not be saved through my bank accounts. I will not be saved through declaring my independence. I will not be saved through political reasons or through, through no, no, nothing, nothing, nothing will save me. Nothing will separate me from the Lord and nothing will save me but the Lord. Jonah had been in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights when he prayed. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make a good. What I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. I, this is, this is, maybe this is a message from you, for, for you. Maybe this is something you really needed to hear today. But honestly, this is a message that I needed to hear today. I cannot cling to worthless idols. I can't cling to the way I thought it would be, the way that I think it should be. I often say, this is just not the way it's supposed to be. But that's, that's my determination of the way I think it should, should be. God may have a different idea. I can't cling to that. I can't cling to what I think I deserve. I can't cling to what I think I've earned. I can't cling to what I think is owed to me, what I think I have a right to. I can't do that. I need to give it up. I need to sacrifice it so that I have none of that left. Nothing left. It's all God's. Sacrifice it to God. Because salvation comes from the Lord. I hope I've encouraged you today. I, I've i heard God's message for me today. This was, this was important. I am praying for you. I hope you would hold me in prayer as well. Have a good week. I will see you next week along the Bending Road. Thank you for watching. And thank you for working together along this journey. Connect with me on social media or on my website at bendingroad.weebly.com. Let me know how I can pray for you as you navigate the bend in your road. I pray that when you see the bend in your road, you will not be afraid, but will take the hand of God and keep walking. You are not alone.